This program contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Thespian Talk, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and my co-host this week is The Omega. Hello. Yes. And starting off our... Uh, not not week long, but not month long either, because we've picked up ten people and possibly a couple of more, because there were some late stragglers thanks to WordPress, not sending in all of the audition forms at once. Fucking assholes, motherfucker. Uh, so the next few shows, we're going to have as many of the newbies on my site, RT Gomer Productions, as possible, and we're starting this week with Magic Steve. How you doing, dude? Hey, how's it going, everyone? Magic Steve in the hizzy the hizzy oh i i immediately regret saying that <laughs> i i feel so much more hip and with it now you know, so. oh totally oh totally yeah so um so yeah uh a little background at least from my end i i remember i first met you at magfest this past year correct and this also can kind of double as a as a sort of a uh, pme survivors reunion show because you're, you're also one of the people that 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 was on pme for a while Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I've got quite my share of stories to tell as well. Yeah, which I, I'm actually kind of surprised. You sent in your audition stuff, and some of them were still linked to PME. I'm surprised they still have some of those videos up. Uh, well, that's because, um, unlike some people, I was fortunate enough to eventually get um, paid for the work I did for them. Huh? Um, I, I, was, I did not have as much as most of you were owed, um, and it took them a long time, but I did get paid. So they do own the rights to those videos. So they are free to keep them up for as long as they want. They are theirs. All right. Well, there you go. That ex that that does explain it. That does. That being said, would I ever go back to them? Fuck no. <laughs> I don't think I would, even if my Patreon page drops to zero. I am yeah. not that desperate. No. No. Oh. But besides the, the little touch of, of mutual drama that we've had over the past year, um, what do you do specifically for those who've never heard of you? Uh, I am a uh, – gosh, how do I describe this? Online, mostly what I do is I do balloon animals. I do a lot of uh, balloon animals of nerdy things. I go to – at MAGFest and Con Bravo this year, I did some large-scale sculptures, tweeted out those pictures – I also do uh, short sketch form comedy. I'm going to start getting into uh, movie reviewing again. I used to do that previously, and I kind of fell up by the wayside. But I'm excited to get back into it. At uh, Con Bravo, I filmed a crossover with uh, Lady Spaz. What? We're going to be... Yeah. Lady Spaz. We're going to be reviewing uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Oh, yeah. She's she's actually shown me a, a, a few bits from then, and it's looking good. Good, good, because I haven't seen anything yet. <laughs> I'm hoping. I'm hoping it, it comes out soon, hopefully this uh, upcoming week. And uh, right now, as soon as we're done with uh, Thespian Talk, I'm going to hop on my little uh, my, my little Evernote page myself, and I'm going to start scripting out for my next review, which is going to be Carpool, the 1996 classic starring Tom Arnold. Oh, wow. I can't say I've ever heard of that one. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people haven't. You're, you're not missing anything. Yeah. But, uh, it... Spoilers. <laughs> Oh, God. And speaking of which, I know some people who, who by this point, everybody knows who's been picked up, who's not been picked up. I don't think I've, like, released an official list yet, but uh, Lady Spaz is among those that was picked up. And some people are going to be like, well, wait a minute. Why didn't you just do her for the thing last week? Because, honestly, I I, I, I don't know. Because <laughs> technically, these we record these on Sunday. They go out on Mondays. Monday is when, you know, last Monday is when I, when I sent out all the emails to everybody. You know that that the that WordPress didn't eat their uh, things, so yeah. But uh, but yeah, so we didn't do it last week with Lady Spaz because well, we just didn't. Oh uh, well. But then again, it's not like there would be any illusion to destroy because I pretty much stayed outright. Hey, we record these on Sunday. <laughs> so, but yeah, but we will have her on again at a at a future time. You know, like a few months later or whatever, because you know, give give everybody else a little bit of extra time to get on and do their thing and talk about themselves. <laughs> oh, I'm good at doing that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like everybody in the internet, hey, you want to talk about yourself? Sure. Yes. But what I'm about me? Me. <laughs> oh, Lordy. 
And you've already and you've already got your first video up on the site too, the uh, vlog review of the new Team and T movie. I, I did. Um, everyone should go check it out right now. See what I thought about it. Um, spoilers: I did not like it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I don't think anyone liked it. No, I actually I watched the first bit of it because I did I didn't want to get spoiled, so you know, I just watched enough to know that my that 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 you know your opinion about it in basic and it's like yeah. And not yeah. long like maybe a day or two after, I think it was uh I think it was Friday. Um uh, my cousins were wanting to go out and see a movie and they were and I asked, "Well, okay, what movie are they going to go see? They're going to go see the new TMNT." They ended up going to see Guardians of the Galaxy because Howard the Duck and right i mean yeah. holy shit <laughs> yeah it's so far beyond you know at this point considering pretty much everywhere knows that howard the duck is at the end of it in fact we discussed it last week uh so so yeah it was it was great I, and i told them flat out yeah uh yeah one of the new guys on the site you know he he, he did a thing on the team and team movie he's like yeah uh worth a rental <laughs> that's, yeah, that's really it. And I, if when it comes out on DVD, I definitely would. You know, if you're curious, give it a rental. It's not god awful. It's just not good. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's not coming out for like a month or two in the UK, and Hagen already said to me, "I don't think we're gonna want to go see it." And I'm like, "I'm fine with that." <laughs> I'm all right with it. Uh, I will admit, I saw one of those trailers, and there, there, I will admit, there was like one bit of one of the trailers that actually kind of got a chuckle out of me that I thought was kind of cute. Was uh, where April, I think it was April, like freaking out over Michelangelo just slumbering up to her, and 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 she's freaking out. And he's like, "It's okay, it's only a mask." As he pulls up his own mask, I thought that was kind of cute to give credit, but that was cute. And there are, I mean, there are a bunch of little cute moments scattered throughout the movie. Mm -hmm. Uh, but overall, the biggest problem I had is just the pacing. Like, uh, I, I watched Doug and Brad's uh, vlogs about the movie too, and Brad had the exact same problem I did. It's too fucking fast. They don't give it any time to to let anything land or sink in. It's just moving from one bit to another. Go, go, go. Yeah. And uh, people are going to be tired out by the end of the movie. They're not. Also, they look like linebackers. I'm <laughs> <That's> sorry. <true. laughs> they do not look like ninja. Like I, you're breaking some serious laws of thermodynamics if you think that people who are that size and weight are going to be hopping around like the night itself. I call shenanigans. Oh, especially Raphael. Like, he is so... They made him, like, buffer than the rest of the Turtles. And um, the, I mean, the best way I can describe it, he looks like if Arnold Schwarzenegger and the Incredible Hulk had a gay baby. Um, <laughs> that's that's basically what he looks like in this film. And uh, don't get me wrong, I think that concept's pretty awesome, but... They're supposed I, to be teens. Like, it's right there in the title. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Not Roid Rage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've just... Known... You know, I've known big guys when I was in high school. You know, they, they get pretty big and they could be pretty beefy, but not that beefy. Just, no. They, they just do not do that. Does not does not happen. I'll just watch my copy of the original movie and sob uh, quietly to myself. Oh, yeah. the, the the thing I did notice, they, they have a lot of fan service in this thing. Mm -hmm. uh, like, right at the beginning when um, uh, Eric Sachs brings the, well, beginning towards the middle, but... Regardless, Eric Sachs shows Shredder his new cyber mech suit. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, he's displaying it off, and Shredder looks at him, looks at the camera, and goes, Tonight I will dine on turtle soup. <laughs> and I, I laughed for like five minutes, guys. Like I yeah. thought that was the funniest part of the whole movie. Yeah. Well, fan service is good in, in, in its own way. So, you know. So. I want I want a cameo from Usaki Ujumbo. I liked him best. Oh, they, they make a... Because he was all, like, eternally pissed off that they didn't take anything seriously. They uh, they actually do reference uh, Usagi Yojimbo in the, in the movie. They uh, I, I don't know how much I want to spoil, but it, it's a minor yeah. thing. Uh, the turtles are all captured, and Sax is looking at him. He's like, remarkable. And to think, we were going to use bunnies to begin with. Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> how ridiculous would that be? Nobody ever expects the bunnies. Ever. Not feudal Japanese bunnies kick your fucking ass. Exactly. I mean, I'm just saying. Yeah. And especially, nobody expects bunnies to be anything more than cute and, and just stomp their foot and become food, especially when bunnies get pissed off. Or like <laughs> Watership Down, because those oh, rabbits God. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. I've only seen I've only seen two people review it. Uh, Mars Girl, who did the recent one for her Patreon, and also, um, oh, God, I forget... 
who it was, but somebody who had done a review of Aura like years ago when she was on the Tigwa Tig forums. And I was like, holy shit, this movie. Well, the thing is that the movie did a not very good job. Okay, well, the movie is good. I, I will say that. And the movie is very dark because I saw it when I was probably too little to have seen it. Mm-hmm. But it does a very good job of conveying the book. Yeah. So if you haven't read the book, I would because it is fucking fascinating. Like, Robert Adams was a genius as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. But just <laughs> Oh, killer bunnies. Genius! Uh, yes! Well, not all killer, just the few killers. Yeah. You know, uh, as you guys do know, I am a, uh, in my, my day job, I am a professional magician. And um, I have used bunnies, and let me tell you, they are mean little bastards. <laughs> like they, they, they look all cute and cuddly, but those suckers will bite your head off, man. No, this is very true. I used to work at a summer camp for a few summers, and I worked in nature study. And we had this evil little rabbit that the kids loved. But when you would try to pick him, like, he wouldn't come or go anywhere. You had to pick him up and drag him. And he would kick his back legs. And I ended up with, like, suicide mark scratches on my wrists. And, like, people would be like, is there anything that you want to talk about? I'm like, no, it's not. It's rabbit. It's not. Bunny's making me look like a cutter, damn it. Was, little Uh, asshole. uh Oh, Oh, so yeah, so so to get on to get onto the news because we got a bunch that, that some of it from last week, and one of them is even a follow up, which yes. I, I was actually kind of surprised. Um, I believe we talked about it on the last show. There was a, a diner in North Carolina that got famous because, well, it, it gave a fifteen percent discount for praying in public. Ooh, excuse me, uh, and I found this one on a. Uh, ijreview.com uh, site I've never heard of before. Uh, let's see. Uh, there, There is um, – I'll just read it to you. Last week, we covered a story about Mary's Gourmet Diner in North Carolina giving a 15% discount for people who prayed. The story quickly went viral, garnering millions of views and shares across a variety of websites. Many people were thrilled that a restaurant would give people a discount for putting the hustle and bustle of life on hold for a moment in order to reflect regardless of religious preference. And I think I said something last week like, you know, oh yeah, you know, if it was just, you know, they're probably doing it just for Christians and and all of that. But so far, I've looked over this and and I've done a little bit of research, so it's like maybe, maybe they're they're putting their words where their mouth is you know it doesn't matter you know, just take time you could sit there and take like a f- 10 second nap and you'd probably get it <laughs> that's that's how broad it seems to me well have you ever heard the, that famous bit of advice if you're caught sleeping at work and your manager wakes you up just look up and say whisper very silently in jesus name amen <laughs> what was that you wanted oh sorry i was just praying well, there I, you was, go. I was snoring while i was praying because i love the lord there you go just say snore for the lord <laughs> <laughs> oh but yes yeah, so many commenters had feared the article would be slapped down and the second and third top comments from the previous article of the site this is fantastic wish more places would do this sad thing is though a bunch of idiot atheists would probably sue for discrimination and prepare for liberal outrage and lawsuits in three two well this week we learned that Validating the fears of many, fr- many rather, the Freedom From Religion Foundation found this to be a violation of the Civil Rights Act and wrote a letter to Mary's Gourmet Diner using, urging them to discontinue this discriminatory discount. If you truly wish to reward gratitude in customers regardless of religion, you must do so in a way that does not single out customers who pray for favorable treatment. On the one hand, I don't know if it's legal for them to apply the discount even if it's not like a company policy it's, it's just something that they do it's an unofficial policy or whatever i don't know about the legalities behind it but it just seems like they're applying discounts randomly and they're using prayer as a cover for it well i mean the thing is if they are actually violating the civil rights act then that's yeah. something if, if they are if what they're doing is legally violating that then that's fine mm-hmm. but i mean at the same time you know, like I, I, we were talking before the show, and I mentioned I remember there was some guy in California who ran a restaurant who, you know, had a sign that saying that he would give you a discount if you prayed in Spanish. And people went, bug fuck, you'd have thought he'd have killed a puppy with a piece of the true cross. I mean, like, and he, finally he had, you know, he was like, all right, I was just kidding. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm done. But the thing is that 
if things like that really actually are violating the law, then you got to stop. You know, if they're yeah. not violating the law, then well, you know. Yeah, and and that's why I'm saying I don't, I honestly don't know if something like this would be violating the law. At least in this country, in other countries, who knows? But in this country, I'm not real sure because it's like, okay, you know. And if you really want to give 15% discounts to other people, then, then you know, just give them 15% discount, you know. Find a reason. Uh, hi, your tie looks awesome. I'm taking 15% off your bill, you know. And then, of course, of course, that would also have its problems because inevitably you would have some some jerk ass or whatever say, hey, you know. You have a you have a nice rack and nice cleavage. I'm taking 15% off your bill because I love your tits. And you know people will complain about that. Maybe not the person in question, but you know people will. Well, of course. I mean, I, I'm basically with you on that. I think if, uh, <clears throat> if it is breaking the law, which, again, I don't know if it really would be in this country, but if it is, then definitely needs to stop. If yeah. not, um, I say, you know, that's their decision although it's probably a poor decision they're going to be alienating a, a lot of potential customers and uh, let's be real here i don't think that's the missing 11th commandment thou shalt save money for me yeah like i i just i i don't think i i think it's going a little excessive but don't you know jesus saves Bum -bum. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh sorry <laughs> good night everybody <laughs> pretty much oh but yeah but they've since you know, since the Freedom From Religion Foundation got involved, they have stopped it. So you can't go to this place and act like you're praying and get a discount. Which I wouldn't be surprised if there were a lot of people taking advantage of that anyway. Just, you know, okay, I'm hungry, I need to go on a discount. Hey, if I act like I'm praying in this place, they'll possibly give me 15% off my meal. So, you know. Is that negated, though, if you dine and dash? That's oh. a very good question. Oh. Uh, just wow. Like instead of answering your prayer, Jesus kills a puppy. <laughs> oh no. Uh, what if it was a it, what it was a rabid puppy, so. Okay. That's that's a little better. I like the length of hypotheticals we're going to today. Yes. But the rabbit puppy had other puppies that I don't know. Oh. He had friends and the friends felt lost. Oh. There we go. Oh, poor puppies. See, Jesus, do you see what you started? Do you see? <laughs> and I'm pretty sure right now my girlfriend is listening to this and hugging her dog really, really close. Aww. Oh, uh, well. But she does that, and it's cute. Uh, what is not cute, however, are the people in this next article. Homophones, and, and yes, I am going to go ahead and note, yes, Nash did talk about it on the last on his last Radio Dead Air, uh, but uh, I'm going to talk about it here too because, God damn it, this is interesting to me. Homophones, as any English grammarian can tell you, are words that sound the same but have different meanings and often different spellings, such as be and be, through and through, which and which, there and there, and there. This concept is taught early on to foreign students learning English because it can be confusing to someone whose native language does not have that feature. Makes sense. No, yeah, this is true. But when the social media specialist for a private Provo-based English language learning center wrote a blog explaining homophones, he was let go for creating the perception that the school promoted a gay agenda. Because homo. Really. It's just, just, just okay. Base, you know, the, 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 the uh, prefix homo, it just means same. That's all it means. Same. Homochromia. You know, same color, same eye color. You know, homosexual. You like people of your same gender or sex. Homo sapien. Human being. Same. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So there, there are different ways to use the word homo, and just because you use use it in generally the homosexual term, oh goddamn. Oh. Just this makes me think that maybe these people shouldn't be in charge of children. No. Uh, Tim Torkildson says uh, after he wrote his blog on the website of his employer, Norman Global Language Center, his boss in Norman Order, Clark Woodger, Woodger, called him into his office and told him he was fire. As Torkildson tells it, Woodger, Woodger, whatever, said he could not trust him and that the blog about homophones was last straw. 
Now our school is going to be associated with homosexuality, Woodger complained, according to Torkelson, who posted the exchange on his Facebook page. <laughs> well then. Torkelson, he was careful to write a straightforward explanation of homophones. He knew the homo part of the word would be politi could be politically charged, but he thought the explanation of that quirky part of the English language would be educational. Well, with the education... The quality of education in this country steadily declining since even I was in high school. Um, yeah, people be people be stupid. I mean, it's like, ah, what the fuck? So does that mean that we're going to change any English word in which we use the the Latin prefix homo, just because Southern people get upset? Or the, was this the South? Uh, was, there, is it, I'm assuming some, it's no. This the is South. this is some Utah. S- well, it's nearly the south. Close. <laughs> it's the south with deserts. I mean, let's be honest. Well, the south with deserts, that's more like uh, Arizona, actually. Or Texas. Yeah, and they have, they have those same problems in Arizona. That that state's a bugfuck state. Yeah. Oh, but it's like, what the hell, guys? I mean, and this made me wonder. You know how, you know how you'll see people go out and they'll be like, you know, like two dudes are talking and be like, hey, I like your tie. No homo. It's like, so what, you're telling him no same? What? I mean, I know what I know what the the societal um, you know, uh, connotation is meant to be, but you know, still, you're really telling them no same. It's really what you're telling them. So these people should not be teaching English to foreigners. No, not at all. No, I don't think they should be teaching English to 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 native people either. Whether whether they were born here or if they were born from a gener- or future generation of people who came over and took over the land. You know what this makes me think of? This makes me think of that commercial, and it, it does get some playtime sometimes on RDA. It's for a, a language company in Germany, and it's like you know a pair, like a, a a couple, an older couple, get in the car with their kids, and the mother puts the radio on a song where the lyrics are "I want to fuck you in the ass," and they're all like bopping along to the song, and then the tagline of the commercial is "Need to learn English." <laughs> for some reason, this just reminds me of that. <laughs> God. Uh, Look it up on YouTube, listeners. It's there. <laughs> I wanna fuck you in the ass. Yeah, and they're just like all like hopping around, like, oh, sweetie, what a lovely song. <laughs> Since we're German, is how that works. Well, there you go. Uh, mm-hmm. Speaking of fucking in the ass, <laughs> <laughs> as we so often do. Yes. Uh, our next story comes out of South Carolina. <laughs> it just, uh, I feel bad for this teenager. A mother in South Carolina called sheriff's deputies on her son this week after finding porn playing on her living room TV. According to the Spartanburg County Sheriff's Office, deputies were dispatched to a residence Tuesday afternoon after a distraught mom called 911. She stated that when she entered the residence, her 15-year-old son was in his bedroom, reads the police report. Her daughter turned on the TV and porn was on. According to the report, the 40-year-old mom immediately turned off the TV and ushered her two-year-old daughter out of the room before calling the police on her son. What? My 15-year-old's watching porn. Can you come and arrest him or something? 911 is not I'm telling mom for adults. No. It's just... If if that isn't my mom growing up, I would be in prison right now. That's all I'm saying. I would be too, probably. I mean, first of all, if you're, if it's your kid and if they're under the age of 18, you have every right to be angry at them. Yeah, you can cool. be like, fine, I'm taking away your internet or you can't watch TV for a week. I mean, that's cool. That's within the realm of what you're allowed to do to your child. Oh, yeah. What did she think the police would do? Because while he might have broken one of your household rules, he has not broken the law. Yeah. Oh. And she even requested that a report be done to document her son's behavior and due to her daughter being exposed to porn, the police report reads. What? Great, now son, she's given her own on child a record. record. Yeah. It's like, really? Really? Just... <sighs> if I was that kid, I'd get a lawyer and has to be emancipated. Yes, please. For his behavior. There's nothing illegal about watching porn. No. There's not. I mean... No, you, not even for a not... teenager. I mean, right. it's just... I mean, it's illegal I for mean, them it wasn't to, I guess... I mean, it was child porn, so he's, there's no law being broken here. Yeah. Like, I mean, what's going to happen, you know? He's going to run for office, you know, 30 years down the line and say, we have a police report that you watched porn. It's like, yeah, so what? So does every other politician, whether they admit it or not. Even Michelle Bachman watches porn. Yeah, but she probably watches, like, weird, freaky stuff, though. 
<laughs> like 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 some kind of like the worst fetish. That's probably what she watches. Oh, she... so that could be a fetish in and of itself. There you go. There's Pop. regular porn, and then there's Michelle Bachman watching porn. Porn. Oh God. We should ask porn critic. Yes. We should. Or Mr. Mendo. Yeah, that's true. He he knows a lot about porn. I was about to say he watches a lot of porn, and I corrected myself, and I realized, no, that's probably correct. He, yeah. he probably does watch a lot of porn. Yeah, it, which, Mr. Mendo, he's another one of those we, we also picked up in, like, his first three or four, like, a porn review trilogy or something, <laughs> which is pretty awesome. Mendo's good people. Yes, he is. Yes. Oh, uh, but, god damn, don't call, folks, folks. If your kid's doing something wrong, the proper response is not to call 911. The proper response is to just keep the kid from doing whatever it is you want them to not do, either by taking stuff away, th- tossing them in the corner, not literally, you know, sitting down, whatever whatever is necessary that does not go over into abuse. Sometimes the line is hard to distinguish because you are blinded by anger, but if your good sense will prevail, then... Yeah, everything. Like, I can understand if she came back and there was a DVD in there and it was child porn. Yeah. Because that is a crime, and I don't care who the person is in relationship to you, that does need to be reported. But, like, I'm trying to imagine the policeman that got there be like, okay, so what? Mm-hmm. So, wait, what? You... <sighs> Johnson, you want to handle this one? <laughs> Johnson? Oh, God. Johnson is the other cop. No, I'm just... That's a that's an interesting name for this situation. That's for sure. <laughs> no, no, he's not. He's just a private. Oh, <laughs> very nicely done, sir. Oh, so we oh. so, like set the tone for this entire episode. Yes, definitely. But um, here's the thing: uh, like her calling the cops, complete overreaction. But you got to think it's better than the alternative because that's actually, you know, God forbid, talking to her son. You know, and she didn't we all like, know you pull can't a do gun that. Or something. Yeah, that's true. So, I mean, I've heard of parents calling their kids because they've snuck a look at their Christmas presents early. That's just well. Do you know? I was in, and this was this was years ago. Uh, one of the store I worked in down in D.C. actually, and we were really close to the Capitol building. You know, we were okay, not Capitol building. We were clearly close to um, shit, the big one, Pentagon. Mm-hmm. We were about five minutes down 395 from, from Pentagon. So we often had, there were a lot of police around, just transit police, or it's D.C., you know, there's police all over the place. And there were some officers that came in pretty regularly, and they were nice guys. You know, I was ringing up this one officer once, and I was talking about something, because he said his daughter was having issues with her car, and I was like, oh, really? And so this this kid was giving his mom trouble at one of the registers down for me, and I heard it go, you see that policeman? He's going to take you to jail if you don't stop misbehaving. Oh, God. And... Like, the policeman looked over, and he just rolled his eyes, and I was like, I know, right? <laughs> you know, I seem to remember as a kid, my parents threatening my uh, brother-slash-cousin, long story, but with that, you know, they never did, but it got him to stop whatever the fuck he was doing. But see, that what that teaches kids, though, is that policemen are mean and horrible, and they will they will imprison you against your will when you've not really actually done anything wrong. So in a crisis, if a child sees a policeman, it, their instinct is to not trust that adult. Ah, good point, yeah. good point. That, that is part of it. And there's the other part where you see stories of cops shooting people as they're fleeing, you know, or whatever, you know, police brutality stories. But that's a whole different issue. <laughs> well, that usually doesn't occur in a bookstore. But Yeah, yeah no, no. But I, I actually live in, a, in Flint, Michigan, one of the – we're always in the top five most dangerous cities in the country. Oh, fun. Um, and uh, – Anytime I see a cop, I make it a point to be as nice and pleasant as I can to them. Mm-hmm. Just because it's funny to me to see they're, they're not used to it. They completely <laughs> throw them off their game. They're like, oh, hi. Yeah. Hello, friend. How exactly. Mm-hmm. Oh, but yeah. Oh, so. <clears throat> you ever have one of those moments where a burp wants to come up and it never does? Because that, that's what's tried to happen. No, I'm, I'm a girl. That doesn't happen. Ah, uh, like... sure. It doesn't. <laughs> Papa Mentos, those solve everything. There you go. Oh, so. Fresh do, 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 do. So do now I... that I've. Oh. <laughs> now that I've practically Carlin through everything, uh, our next story is has to do with good old Ted Cruz. <sighs> and conservatives in general. Conservatives don't quite seem sure of how the First Amendment works. While some suggest that hate speech should protect speakers from any sort of consequences, Others, like Senator Ted Cruz's father, Rafael Cruz, believe that churches are great places for politicking. No, they're not. 
That's actually against the law. Mm -hmm. In a speech on July 31st at the Trinity ISD Auditorium in Texas, the Elder Cruz – okay, I, I, it's more about his – it's more about Raphael than Ted here. The statements of Cruz the Elder. Yes. He had, as follows. Is he advocated for the distribution of biblical voting guides in churches. Uh, let's see. What was what was that term you used just like maybe 30 seconds ago concerning this? What was it? Oh, oh, oh. So illegal. Yes! Actually, it's not illegal. It just means that they would lose their... The thing is that churches don't have to pay taxes because they're technically nonprofits. Mm -hmm. But if you if you you can't politic in the church, if you do, then you have to start paying taxes. In fact, I want to say maybe like six months before the last election, there was a thing where you know Tea Partiers and and conservative folks actively encouraged you know preachers to to preach politics from the pulpit, and then dared the IRS to do something about it. And the IRS knew if they acted on it then it would start a holy fuckstorm, so they did nothing, which kind of pissed me off, but whatever. You know, one of those times where you need the IRS to have balls, and they didn't have them! Uh, put me in charge of the IRS. I'll tax the, the IRS doesn't have churches. balls, it just has dicks. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. Wah, wah, wah. Uh, invoking the Declaration of Independence, Cruz began. When government ceases to work towards those ends, it is our right, and I, it, and it is, I believe, our duty to remove that government and replace it with another government, and we have an unprecedented opportunity to do that right now in these next elections, he continued. But we cannot do that if we sit at home. I want to encourage all of you. I want to repeat what I said to the pastors this month. Every church in America needs to have a voter registration table in the lobby. Now, if your pastor tells you, no, that is political... Cruz proceeded. You tell him, no, it is not political, and that's our civic responsibility. Civic responsibility is political, you moron! Well, yes and no. I think, I think encouraging voter registration doesn't count because you can, you can encourage everyone to, to register to vote. Like, I've been to concerts, and like, are you registered to vote? I'm like, yeah. They're like, oh, okay, we're looking for people who aren't. Like, but there are specific nonprofits for that, like Rock the Vote and other such things so that registering people to vote that in and of itself is fine okay but telling people how they should vote or how or that god wants them to vote a certain way that's the part that's illegal yeah how many elections have i even just presidential elections have we seen seen through because i want to say they did that when they, when they re-elected w well my opinion is if god wants someone to win the election he'll just do it himself what is it what do i need to vote for yeah exactly <laughs> I'm sorry, oh, I was a bit distracted. The entire time he was reading that speech, I was just picturing it coming from uh, Bill Pullman from Independence Day. <laughs> and you tell him, no, it's not political. That is our civic responsibility. Mm, damn. That, that, would, that would be the only way that would be more awesome. Or if Will Smith said it, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. But, like uh, wouldn't make it that much more right, but it would so be pretty awesome. He's, kind of, he's skirting a fine line. Yeah. Some of the things he's advocating for are illegal, some are not. So. Yeah, just uh, and of course he's also calling for churches to have um, voters' guides that share clearly how candidates of both parties are voting on biblical issues, not partisan. Just list all the candidates and show how they vote. But it doesn't. There's no. There, okay. See, this is the show that I get to go crazy because I can't go crazy like this on lesbian talk. But so, all right. Here's the thing. I'm gonna break it down. There's no such thing as a biblical issue because the Bible happened a long time ago. We don't vote on things like that anymore. You don't you don't see people upset that the Obama administration has not yet addressed the plague of the firstborn. Biblical times happened. There aren't any more biblical issues. What are we going to argue that we should, you know, drop the metric system and and drop imperial system and go back to cubits? I mean, like uh, is there a petition to get Nebuchadnezzar out of office? No. There's no such thing as biblical issues. The Bible is done now. It's over. It happened. Yeah, and and more and more, it's looking more like just a bunch of things people just wrote down, whether they happen or not. Who knows? But you know, it's looking I more mean, and more like if it comes down to biblical issues. Sorry, but shellfish and pork have my vote. Yeah, I, you know, you can have the shellfish. Give me my bacon. Well, only certain shellfish. Yeah. I don't like mussels because, and I don't like oysters because they look like phlegm. You don't like mussels? Mussels are delicious. No, they're <laughs> phlegm. I like I like clams. Mm. Also, I used to go down the Jersey Shore for the summer, and you could just pull them right off the side of the jetty, and they smell. Yeah. Probably because they came from the Jersey Shore, but you know. Well, most likely. 
Oh, so let's go over to Illinois. <laughs> oh God, this this is this would have been perfect for the Gore News on two cents, I think. And that's the Gore News. Yes, I was helping. <laughs> and now and now two is going to be like, hey, <laughs> copyright. Yeah. If you're two, they're anti Griffin write the show. Yes, please, and we'll 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 actually get you on the show this time. <laughs> oh. An Evanston, Illinois man fatally shot himself Sunday night while showing off a shotgun he thought wasn't loaded to a group of friends, according to the Chicago Sun-Times. Police were called to, Evan to an Evanston home for an accidental shooting. They found Eric Zizanski on the floor with a shotgun wound with a shotgun wound to the head lying next to the shotgun. He was taken to the hospital and died about two hours later, according to police. According to witnesses, Zizanski was in his apartment with friends when he where he took out a shotgun and began showing it off. Dude, no one wants to see your shotgun. <laughs> His friends told him to put the gun away, so he proceeded to take two or three rounds out of the gun, according to police. He pointed the gun at his cheek, said the gun was empty, and pulled the trigger, witnesses said. Oh, you idiot! Or, this is just the best covered-up murder ever. Like, they all watched CSI, and they thought out the angles and stuff like that. They set it up, and they shot him, and they were like, Yeah, officer, we told him to put it down, but he said it wasn't loaded. Yeah. And they all got away scot-free. Somehow, I don't think these people are that smart. They could be. Yeah. yeah. And if it turns out that I'm wrong and Omega's right, I will eat myself. This week on Murder, She Wrote. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> still, it's like, I, I, I feel bad for his family. You know, you know, you know, his family, they're having to deal with it because basically this guy died of stupid. It's, I hate to say it, but it's Darwin in action. I mean, really. Yeah. I mean, it's just you. You don't do that. I mean, I mean, yeah. You want to check and make sure the chamber is empty. You fire it away. Make sure your chamber is empty before you go pointing it at your head. And even then, don't do it anyway because you could be wrong. Well, you know, judging from the tone of this article, I'm pretty sure alcohol was involved. Oh, probably. Hey, y'all, watch this. Pretty much. Oh, just look at my shotgun, isn't it, Birdie? Yeah. Who's <sighs> now, Reggie? I don't think you ought to own oh, them. Well, someone call the sheriff. What yeah. were we saying before about penis envy? <laughs> oh God! No, I, he was wanting to. Oh no, he's showing off his extension of his penis, just like people who drive down my street and rev up their engines really, really loud. Anytime someone says the phrase penis extension, I think of like hair extensions. I think of like a little teeny <laughs> clip on penis. You could just like... <laughs> but it would have, you'd have to Sign have me like, up. You'd have to have it set in like a certain way so it wouldn't like what would you clip it onto? Your balls? That would be horrible. But like I don't know, like you would like tie it around your leg like a garter. I don't know. I consider these things. We we we, we already have uh, penis extensions like that. They're called strap ons. Yeah, but that's already a thing, and I like—I better like the idea of like hair extensions for guys, but they yeah. look like a dick. Well, you know, well, guys, if that have... did exist, the only guy who could have ever sold it was Billy Mays. That's... Yes. Hi, yes. I'm Billy Mays for the penis extension. <laughs> Is your schlong not long? Oh god, <laughs> he's so great. And then that horrible slap chop guy would come up with a knockoff or something because he was oh, yeah. an asshole. Hi, it's Vince here for the peeny. <laughs> <laughs> No, Don't no, no. be a weenie, get a peenie. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, I've often thought I really should be like a TV spokesman. I come up with this shit all the you time. Need, you need to have, you need to have like a, a sketch show where that's just that, like like the commercials from Saturday Night Live. Mm -hmm. I watch the shit out of oh, that on definitely. YouTube. Definitely. Oh, so... you, you give me an idea for my next sketch, I may have to do that. The penis do extension it. sketch. Do it. <laughs> I, I, won't, I won't claim any copyright. It's all yours. Yes. It's Creative <laughs> Commons. You'll get you'll get a writing credit on it. Yeah, and 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 guess what? Unlike certain other companies, um, yeah, I have no problem with that. <laughs> <laughs> Not saying nothing. Yeah, but we will say something about Syracuse, Utah. A teenager was critically injured when a pickup truck driven by a family member ran over her while she was sunbathing in a residential driveway. Oh, shit. Police told KSL the 15-year-old girl was listening to her iPod with earbuds and did not hear the truck as it backed out of the garage about noon Friday in Syracuse, 25 miles north of Salt Lake City. Hi, Dark Rose Prime. She was flown by medical helicopter to a local hospital where she remained in critical condition with a head injury Saturday. Ow. Her name was not released. Police say the pickup driver did not realize the girl was on the driveway and will not be charged. You... It's just unfortunate for everyone. That is... 
I, I mean, I, I, I cannot call the teenager stupid because, you know, you sunbathe on your driveway. Okay, you have no reasonable expectation to realize that, hey, somebody may be backing out. Especially if you're like, okay, you know, nobody's doing anything. Well, I'm going to do this. And maybe an emergency came up or, or like somebody felt, okay, we're low on Pepsi. We're going to go get some Pepsi. And what the driver should have done was check for – just just check the driveway for dogs, debris, and dudes. Yeah, especially if you're backing out. I mean, unless you have – I mean, oh, actually, if you have one of those swanky cameras, it would have shown you it. But, like, you should be at least looking. You can't just, like – Back the fuck out of, you know, yeah. the fuck. I mean, it's like, what the hell? Just, just, god damn. That's just, I, I hope she's okay, so. I hope so, too. Because it just, getting your head run over by a vehicle, which is what it, what it really does sound like, cannot be comfortable. And at least if it was, like, a non-family member's fault. Like, I hate to say it, but, you know, it sounds like she's in pretty serious condition. Like, they would at least be able to sue to, to pay for some of the medical bills. But you can't even sue your family. Yeah. Uh, which means if any family member of mine tries to do that for whatever reason, I am safe. <laughs> Wait, tries to sue you or tries to run you over? Yes. Okay. Good answer. <laughs> oh, speaking of family, I, I have a lot of family in uh, Central Florida, by the way. I'm sorry? And that's where these next two stories are, so take two shots. It's always Florida. Always Florida. Florida. Yes. This first one is out of Orange County, Florida. Orange County deputies arrested an Orlando man they said used a small pen-like device to record video up a teenage girl's skirt at a public grocery store in June. What? Roger A. Strong, 60, was arrested Friday morning at his home on Blackwater Pond Drive in Waterford Lakes and charged with video voyeurism. According to investigators, the girl said she was standing at the magazine rack of the Publix near the intersection of... Alafaya Trail and Curry Ford Road when a man approached. Investigators said the man, holding a small device that looked like a pen, crouched on the floor next to the girl. The girl says she felt as though the man was using the device to look up her skirt. She told investigators she walked away from the man who then left the store. They also said the girl's mother told the store manager about the incident and the manager called the deputies. Surveillance video was released in July in in hopes of identifying the man. Investigators said a tip through crime line eventually led them to Strong. When defectives Defectives, defective detectives, rather, showed up at Strong's home. They asked him if he knew why they wanted to question him. Before show, he muttered, um, yeah, I saw the TV. So the guy sounds like the guy is admitting it. And they obviously have got some kind of evidence on him, too. Otherwise, we probably wouldn't be here. But, dude. Like, what was he going to say if someone said, what are you doing down there? I'm like, I'm just checking her oil. <laughs> right. Like, like what? Like, just want to make sure she's properly. Educated. It's just. Oh. Uh, and 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 how old? How old was she? Is just just is just. A, if she's young enough. That's like federal crimes right there. Yeah. And and I and, and you know, remember how I mentioned that my family lives in Central Florida, Orange County, and all that area there. Uh, my uncle, my uncle has uh, two daughters, and. Over the years, he had stated repeatedly that if he, somebody did anything to either of his daughters that they didn't want, like if they, somebody assaulted them, or raped them, or whatever, he would personally find whoever did it and break their fingers with a hammer, slowly. Ouch. Yeah. He is very protective of his daughters, and that is how I know that neither of, that, that neither of my cousins are the teenage girl in this story because we would also be hearing, yeah, Strong also is suffering from um, ten broken fingers, um, ten broken toes, broken legs, broken arms, broken everything. You know. He broke. Yes, he would be completely broken. Done broken. Yes. So moral of the story, kids, if you meet either of my cousins, don't don't of those two particular cousins, don't fuck with them. Their, their father will end you. And, make and now you know. And knowing is half the battle. G.I. Joe. <laughs> I'm glad we could all come together for that. Yes. Oh, and the other one is in Sanford, Florida, which is not too far from Orlando. It's Sanford and Sons, Florida. Du- Yay! Du- 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 all right, I'm old. <laughs> I remember that show. Uh, so do I. Here I come, Elizabeth. I know. And then when he actually died, that, that that actor, I was like, I wonder if he said that. My dad's like, that's horrible. And I was like, you thought it too. Yeah. I bet you everybody That is horrible, it. but yeah, I thought the same thing. Yeah. 
Oh, a Sanford, Florida police officer was fired after he taunted a jail inmate with McDonald's french fries and later threatened the inmate with his service taser while the inmate washed his patrol car, the Orlando Sentinel reported. Wow, what a dick. Nine-year veteran Mid Mickey Hinckley was placed on administrative leave when his superiors discovered the incidents on June 4th, but was only fired yesterday, or the day before that this went up on the internet, after an investigation determined that he had violated departmental po depart departmental policy I English good. According to police documents obtained by the Sentinel, Hinckley forced inmate Victor Gunga Gonzaga Rivera to wash his patrol car. When Hinckley complained that Rivera had not put enough tire shine on his wheels, he also activated his taser, which caused an afraid Rivera to take off running. Rivera was not hurt, and Hinckley told investigators that he was merely testing his taser when he turned it on. Uh-huh. What? You don't yeah. have to, that's not something that you have to... Like, this is an emergency broadcast message, we'll be testing the taser in five minutes. No! That's not how that works. Yeah. The investigation also revealed that earlier the same day, Hinckley had taunted Rivera with a bag from McDonald's that he claimed contained French fries. Here's your food, he told the hungry inmate before refusing to give him any. I like that that's the word that he claimed contained french fries, as though it, like, I don't know, might have contained chicken selects or something else. Yeah. He claimed it was french fries. God only knows. Yeah, it could have been hash browns. <laughs> Schrodinger's McDonald's bag. I mean, who knows? <laughs> yes. yes. It is. Are they french fries or are they chicken? They're He's both. lying. It was actually a Frosty from Wendy's. <laughs> oh. oh. Oh, uh, but yeah, this this cop is a dick. Well, what a cockmaster. Yeah, I'm not like the gateway either. No, it's just, dude, that's not cool. I mean, and and is is correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know if either of you would know it. I don't know if any of our listeners would know it. But is it normal? Is, is it legal and normal for a cop to force an inmate to wash his patrol car? I mean, that that just does not seem normal think... to me. I think that's probably illegal. You can like you can give inmates work to do, like road cleaning detail and stuff like that, mm -hmm. as part of like one of those work release things. But I think actually making them do personal things for you, I think that violates something. Yeah, yeah. that's not allowed. I've had um, some friends who have um, been in jail before, and they've told me that it's, I mean, just what you said. You know, personal stuff you really can't force them to do, but you can give them options. You can say, hey, you know here's a job you can do, and they can choose to take it or not. Yeah. Oh, and then taunting him with food is like, really, dude? You're such a dick. And they weren't, it's McDonald's french fries. I mean, if they were Five Guys, I don't know. Oh, God, Five Guys. I actually tried those for the first time, like, in the past couple of weeks or whatever. Oh, my God, they are so awesome. Good thing about Five Guys is wherever you go to get the fries, usually they'll tell you what part of Idaho they came from, like, those potatoes came from. Yeah. As you, cause, and that, that makes the experience no different anyway, but it feels like it does. Oh, yeah. Well, there's a Five Guys not more than 10 minutes from my house, and I've never been there. You should try it. I mean, the 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 way it is is you can get burgers and what, whatever fixings you want are free. Mm -hmm. Like, I usually get the small one, just like the, the one patty, because that'll do it for me. But it's amazing, and their fries are made in... They are fried in real peanut oil, mm -hmm. and um, they also they have things of peanuts all over if you want to, while you're waiting, eat peanuts, you can. Yes. Oh, God. It... Like, it's it's terrible for you. It, it's horrible, but it's it's really good. Yeah, and they do not skimp on fries either. No, like, if you get a small fries, like, split it with somebody because that's a whole ocean of potatoes right there. Yeah, like... An like, ocean of potatoes. Like a veritable ocean. Yeah, the, the large. Before I went, Becky told me that. Yeah, don't get, don't get the large. Those will be way too much for you. I said, okay. Yeah, like I'll just get the medium then, and then even the medium I couldn't finish. Well, the large basically, if you have a whole family, you can you can do the large, and that'll be fine. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Oh God! So this is this has been your your thespian talk guide to eating in Five Guys. Yes, and and I just my first time I just went in and got my usual. I just got like a plain cheeseburger, and I fell in love with it. It's like, <gasps> I wish I had more money because <laughs> it was great. Like I haven't been to Five Guys since uh, since I lived down in in Alexandria. But yeah, if, listeners, if you can go, you should go. Yeah. Oh, uh, so. But don't but don't then taunt prisoners with your fries. No, not right. don't do no, that. absolutely not. No. Oh, so our next one comes out of India. A teen girl delivered a swift blow of justice to a rapist, severing his penis completely with a knife. Ooh. Yes. Oh, shit. The rapist, who is also her uncle, 
Oh! Is now being sought out by detectives who applaud the teen for her courage. According to Manif Manipura Pol District Police, the young woman is around 17 years old and had been raped last month. The uncle happened to be a, lo a local tantric, uh, someone who practices ancient rituals, and her parents took her to see him after she fell ill in hopes he would heal her. The uncle believed she was being influenced by a supernatural power, and the cure he dreamt up involved gagging and raping his niece. Because that's not how you mono. drive demons out of someone's body. It's not mono, you just need a dick and no. No. The power Although of dick compels you. Jesus, I mean, seriously. No. Oh my god. See, see. And that's the worst time, I mean, there's never a good time to have your penis cut off, I'm assuming, but, like, th that's gotta be the worst, because it's all, like, I mean, I don't have one. I can only speculate. It's when, like, there's all blood in it, right? Yep. Like, to make it puffy. So, <laughs> you're, I mean, well, you know, whatever it does. I don't, it's not like I sit around and like, all right, let's watch penises do tricks. But <laughs> there's actually a stage show for that, by the way. But, yeah, so so I'm imagining, like, you'd lose a fuck ton of blood. You could seriously, the guy could bleed to death very quickly. Hey, you know what? He's he's raping his niece. In the well, I'm not niece. saying that he doesn't deserve it. I'm yeah. just saying that's very clever, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. And and by the way, if if you if anybody out there is sick enough to think that raping somebody would help drive out demons, no. Not only are would you be a horrible human being, but you're just adding more demons as opposed to taking them away. Just you know. So you're you're going to fail in two counts. So you know you're a horrible human being, and you're adding demons. Things we learned today: demons or STDs. Yes. You heard it here first. Yes. The girl didn't tell anyone about the rape, and her family didn't suspect a thing because the uncle was a trusted family member. However, when the teen's parents made her visit her uncle again, she was armed and ready with a cell phone and a knife. This time, she recorded their conversation, and when he tried to rape her a second time, she cut off his penis and escaped. Oh yeah. Oh Go, yes. They were. The goddess Kali is in her tonight. Mm -hmm. With the evidence in tow, the young woman went to the village council to report the rape, but they didn't handle the situation adequately. Unsatisfied, she went to the female police officers at a local station. Senior Officer A.K. Singh, superintendent at the Alam Nagar police station, said the incident happened 20 days ago. Initially, the girl went to the village council, but when that was unable to resolve the matter, the case was brought to me. When they, We then filed a case at the women's police station. Singh reported that after the incident, the attack ran off and, the, and then the detectives are now trying to track him down. When Singh was asked if the young woman would have had any charges filed against her, he simply said, Why should we file a case against her? We should applaud her bravery and courage. Fuck yes. That is yeah. exactly what needs to happen. There should be some kind of thing, and I'm not sure of the physics that someone else can design it because I'm just the concept person. Mm -hmm. But it would be like... Like a diaphragm, but not, but it has teeth. So if, you know, if you can activate it, like, so you'd, like, make some kind of muscle move to activate it, it would be like a chomper. Yes. I've seen um, sketches of just such a device, and they look absolutely terrifying. Oh, yeah. I, I've, I think they've produced some of them, like, in, like, South Africa or some places like that. And it's like, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I would, yeah, if I stuck my dick in that, I would not want to stick my dick in anything else. Well, see, but then you just have to market it to, you know, like, girls of all countries, you know, and, oh, yeah, like, if you, in Japan, they could have the, paint like, little Pokemon faces on it, or you could have, like, Pac-Man, you know, it would be all trendy. <laughs> you need a vaginal chomper, too. Oh, God. <laughs> by, by Sanrio. There you go. Oh, God, the Hello Kitty Rapex? Yes. No, it could be, no, awesome. it could be the, the penguin, the, the sad penguin, Batsmaru. Oh. oh, you got your penis got chomped. Oh, oh, you're going. Well, you to tried. To... You tried to rape somebody. You're a bad penguin. <laughs> no, no, he would be the chomper. He wouldn't be the rapist. Well, no, well, no, well, well, no. The chomper would be saying, "You're a bad rapist." <laughs> In five languages. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what a horrible person! I'm it a sad out. panda. Yes, but but not as sad as your penis. Yes. Oh. You know, I just. <laughs> I would have loved to see the guy's reaction when she cut it off. Because, you know, it was like, well, I wasn't expecting that. No. Nobody expects their penis getting cut off. Exactly. Like, I mean, and well-deserving. Like, dude, that is... I, I just love everything about the, about how she handled this. Oh, yes. And that she was applauded for it. Yes. And the thing is, it also 
you know, helps prove another thing that rapists are usually people that are known to. This is true. That if they're not just, yeah, I mean, yeah, stranger rape can happen, but it's usually somebody that the victim knows and trusts. And thus, not only are they violating the woman's body, but they're also betraying her trust to a degree that, that oh, shit. It, 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 it's just a horrible, 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 horrible thing. And above and beyond anything else, that's his niece. That's his brother or sister's child. Like, he probably watched this child be born and be like, oh, baby, sweetie. And, like, now he's like, well, I'd hit it. You know, that's, uh, that's so wrong. Oh, just no. No, 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 no. I'm glad, I'm glad his dick is gone. I'm glad. Huh. She could feed it to, like, a tiger. Yes. The dick revenge tiger. There you go, and he <laughs> and he just revenge and all tiger. he has to pee out of is, up just now. and all he has to pee out of now is a little tube. Well, like he can. I mean, I guess he could still pee, right? I mean, it, it just. Yeah, I would imagine so. A hole, right? Yeah, I mean, it's just. You know. You just I mean, after they weren't talking about my bits anymore in health class, I just stopped paying attention. Really. <laughs> I know that there's something called the vast deference because it sounded like a word that sounded cool, like some kind of like fantasy place. Like we can take vast deference past, but we'll have to watch out. There's goblins after that. So I really didn't pay any attention to anything else. And I was absent the day we did condoms. So, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm only speculating. Yeah. I learned about the vast deference from South Park. <laughs> That's even better. It is. Was, and then it's like, because our health class teacher was this old lady and God knows she didn't know anything about sex. All right, so our last one, we got only a few minutes left, but we can get to this right. last one because it's, it's, it's a short one. Kids are annoying no matter how you slice it, but if they are crying their heads off and yelling, I want fucking pie, when you're in a line <laughs> at Burger King, the only natural recourse is to then buy every single pie in sight so that the kid has to just fucking deal. One man, Glorious. One man, Glorious. a gawker hero, claims on Reddit to have done just that. In a Reddit thread labeled Off My Chest... One user spins a compelling tale of buying 23 Burger King apple pies when he heard a young crybaby behind him yelling at his mother about wanting some fucking pie. What happens next will surprise and gratify you. From his Reddit con confession, Turns out it was so slow because they had one trainee on cash during their lunch hour rush. All I can think of is how the people behind me ruined my splurge and gave me this headache. I then decide to ruin their day. I order every pie they have left in addition to my burgers. Turned out to be 23 pies in total, and I take my order, walk towards the exit. Moments later, I hear the woman yelling, What do you mean you don't have any pies left? Who bought them all? I turn around and see the cashier pointing me out with the woman shooting me a death glare. I stand there and pull out a pie and slowly start eating it as I <laughs> stare back at her. She starts running towards me, but I can't get to me because of other lineups in the food court. I turn and slowly walk away. The man with the most pies and least crying kids in his face wins. Now, I've heard this story before. I love it, but just something about it screams like urban legend fan fiction. Probably. Cause... Yeah, but I'm on I don't Reddit. Care. It's amazing. I'm on Reddit, and I'm not, I'm not, I don't subscribe to the subreddit off my chest, but it got aggregated into subreddit drama. It got aggregated into Art Child Free, which is one of the, the Reddits that I'm on. And. Yeah, it does sound like one of the things, like, it's a good story, but prove it really happened. But it's it's kind of like the Tooth Fairy. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to choose to believe. And I choose to believe on the man who bought 23 pies. Amen. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I, you know what? If, if I'm feeling particularly spiteful that day, I could be that man. Like, it would. the only thing that would make the story better is if that he then went, like, back to his office or to, like, some other shop and, and people were just standing around being like, I hate my job. But he's like, hey, everybody, free pie. There you go. <laughs> Who wants pie? And give it to his co-workers. He'd be a hero to his co-workers and just a terrible, terrible man to some random lady with a crying, screaming, uh, a crying, screaming, uh, uh, you know, child. I was going to think of some other word to say, but it couldn't come fast enough. Oh, the the only way that would be better is if don't know what you got till it's gone. Started playing on the radio the moment yes. you ordered. <laughs> and like so, the, the discussion came up on on the subreddit uh, for child free people, and a lot of it was because that people. I mean, they went five flavors of nuclear Christmas in the comments. You know, like oh, see what a horrible example of a human being is, and blah blah blah, and things and stuff. And I don't, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, the child. 
is not suffering. You know, the, the child was denied a pie. But at that moment, it's not like the concept of pie ceased to exist once those pies are purchased. They could find pie in other places. They could go to another Burger King. They could find another kind of pie entirely. Mm -hmm. So at most, the child is momentarily inconvenienced. Oh, absolutely. But yeah. the, way the person who was really being published was the mother who deserved it. Amen. There you go. True. <laughs> I mean, the way our societies, you know, run nowadays, everyone feels like they're entitled. And if they don't get what they're entitled to, all hell done broke loose. Um, I've, I've been DJing on a, a few nights a week at a local bar, and we're not allowed to play hip hop. And I've had people almost in tears because I will not play the hip hop song they want to hear because they feel they're entitled to hear it. Why, I, why, I why are you not allowed? The, the last... I'm interested. Go on. Why are you not allowed to? Uh, the bar the... doesn't want hip hop played in there. Uh, okay. Only they want it's they want to make it like a classic rock style bar. Okay, ah. I can see. So that. it's just it's not my mandate; it's the owner's mandate. But so he wants to. It finally got seat. so bad. I turned to this one uh, guy actually who came up four times begging me to play the song. And I'm like, look, dude, is it really going to ruin your entire fucking night if I don't play this one song? And it was like something clicked in him. He realized how fucking stupid he was being. He's like, oh, yeah, I guess it won't. I'm like, good. Get the fuck out. Yeah. I mean, it, from the sounds of it, it's like a theme bar anyway. Yeah. And, it, and, you know, like, you know, musically at least, you know, you know, okay, it's rock. Hip hop is not rock. It, it, it's just click here. Here, people. Boom. That, that's what I'm getting out of it. <laughs> this is the loss. You are never entitled to pie, and you are never entitled to hip hop. That's you. There you go. Deal with it. Oh, but right now we are entitled to end the show because, well, that's about out of time. <laughs> oh. oh. It's our show. Yes. So uh, if we wanted to find Magic Steve on the social media, where could we find him? You can find me on Twitter, Magic Steve eighty three. You can find me on YouTube under the same uh, name, and on Facebook, Magic Steve Balloons. Sweet. And... Well, I didn't know you had a Facebook. I'm going to go subscribe. Yes. Already. All right. Yeah. Subscribe and like. And thank you so much for having me on. This was a lot of fun. Yes. Yeah, you, you've been a treat, man. You've been a real treat. Oh, and, I'm uh... delicious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and if we wanted to find Omega, where could we find her? Oh, Jesus Christ, everywhere. Um, you, um, Follow me on Twitter at The Omega Geek. I have a fan page on Facebook. Uh, they have a website, TheOmegaGeek.com. I have a blip. Uh, blip.tv slash the Omega. Um, I'm on Nerdvice when I can be bothered to write an article. <laughs> I'm on RT Gomer Productions. I'm on Tigwa Tig occasionally with my wife, and I'm just hanging around. Yes. And as for me, if you want to find me on the Twitters and the Tumblers, I'm at Gomer21XX. You can also find me on RTGomer.com and Nerdvice.com, both of which also have their own Facebook pages, so go give them a like, check them out, and check out all the other wonderful producers. There's Now there's even like some uh, cross cross stuff, too, because you got me and Omega. There's also Lady Spaz, who is now on both sites, among other people. And it's all real, really great and well and awesome, so check them out. And if you like the shows that I produce, if you like these shows, if you like the videos that I produce, and you want to help toss some money at me for future productions in terms of you know equipment upkeep, equipment upgrades, software upgrades, etc., or even just so I can put food on the goddamn table, then uh, head over to patreon.com slash gomer21xx and check all that out. Just bear in mind, if you do decide you want to toss money at me, it is per production, and I typically produce 20 to 25 things per month. That includes podcasts, so just so you know what you're getting into, because I've actually had people, you know, toss, hey, I'm going to do this for you, and then all of a sudden they get their bill next month, they're like, oh, shit. <laughs> so, yeah, so don't break yourselves for me, please. You can limit yourself, and, and I strongly suggest you do, because I produce that much. Oh, and speaking of Patreon, we also, on the site proper on rtgomer.com, uh, we do have a support us on Patreon uh, th menu that you can pull down, and you can see not only mine, but also others such as Diamanda Hagen and Miss Nightmare and the Diva and, and a few others. In fact, even uh, Jess, who is, who is now a new member of the site, also has her Patreon up on that menu as well. So go and check it out. 
and and of course I would be totally kicking myself after the show if I did not if I neglected to mention my wonderful and lovely girlfriend Becky Hopkins who also has her own Patreon page patreon.com slash Becky Hop she is an amazing artist a talented animator award winning animator by the way and award winning yes very much award winning wins awards yes very like, much so five a day really yes it's just it's out of <laughs> hand yes and uh, again that's patreon.com slash becky hop also does have links to her deviant art and her own personal page and if you throw enough money at her at once she will do a 30 second animation just for you <gasps> which is awesome Sweet. <laughs> yes so go toss money at her as well it is well worth the money and with that we are going to get out of here thank you guys for listening and until next time, this is Gomer, the Ranting Thespian, with the Omega and Magic Steve, signing off. Bye-bye. Bye. Thespian Talk is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.